Okay. So next speaker is Professor Bart Hal Halperin from Harvard. He will be talking about uh, particle hole symmetry in the half field Landau level. Well, thank you very much. I, again, I'm very grateful to the uh, organizers for having the opportunity to come to this conference, which has been very educational for me. Uh, it's uh, I'm, what I'm going to be, uh, and it's, it's been very interesting indeed. And I'm also, uh, although I uh, really didn't have any, uh, I, uh, I hardly knew uh, Robert. Uh, I, I think I met him at one or two meetings 50 years ago when uh, he was doing condensed matter, uh, doing things that were very relevant to condensed matter physics. I have certainly know him and admired him from actually my very earliest days in condensed matter physics. So um, uh, uh, what I'm going to be talking about is really very different from what you've been hearing in the previous lecture. And in fact, almost everything in this uh, conference, I'm going to be talking about uh, the uh, uh, it, it does involve uh, particle hole symmetry breaking, uh, particle hole symmetry in the half field Landau level. Uh, and uh, it, uh, I'm really going to be talking about two topics, uh, both related to particle hole symmetry or lack thereof. Uh, one is the nature of uh, the even denominator fractional quantized Hall state at uh, filling fraction one five halves and the implication of some very recent measurements on uh, the thermal Hall effect. I'll tell you what all these things mean. I'll, I'll remind you if you don't already know. Uh, and then uh, this, uh, the second, the, the end of the talk, I'll, I'll say something about the nature of the unquantized <coughs> quantum Hall state at filling fraction one half and, near, and what happens at nearby fractions. And I will explain what they are. So let me just begin by reminding you what uh, the uh, uh, a fractional quantum Hall effect is that we're going to be talking about. So the quantum Hall effects are things that happen in two-dimensional electron systems, typically electrons in, in uh, semiconductor structures, in a uh, strong magnetic field in low temperatures. And uh, for uh, uh, and as you all know, if you have non-interacting electrons in two dimensions in a very strong magnetic field, the electrons uh, 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 occupy a, a discrete set of energy levels, uh, which are called Landau levels. And these levels are separated by uh, an energy which is h bar times the cyclotron frequency. If, we, if there's a spin degeneracy, there's additional uh, set of levels. But each spin has uh, that uh, set of levels. And each of these Landau levels, since we have a, we could have a very large number of electrons in a, a discrete set of levels, so there's obviously a degeneracy of each of these levels. And it turns out that the number, the degeneracy is such that there, within each Landau level, there's one uh, orbital electron orbital state per quantum of magnetic flux. So it's proportional to the area of the system at a fixed magnetic field. Uh, and uh, 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 of course, if you have a Fermi level between these two Lando levels, it's very stable because there's an energy gap for create, taking an electron out of the lower Lando level and putting it to the higher Lando level. If you ignore electron-electron interactions and you have a partially full Lando level, then there's a very huge to do what number of ways you can put the electrons in that all have exactly the same energy. So there's a huge degeneracy. And of course, uh, uh, what we're interested in is the effect of electron-electron interactions, which will split this degeneracy. But since you have such a huge degeneracy to begin with, uh, it's a very complicated problem. And there are many things that can happen. Now, what turns out to happen, very surprisingly, is that for certain uh, filling fractions, you get a, a, a ground state which actually is stable. It has an energy gap. These are the fractional quantized Hall states. There's an energy gap in the pure system. If you have impurities, there could be some states in the gap, but they are localized uh, states that don't conduct electricity. So uh, the quantized Hall states occur when you have an energy gap for mobile excitations in the bulk of the system. Now, even though you have an energy gap in the bulk, there always will be gapless excitations around the edge of the system. And these gapless uh, 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 excitations can conduct electricity, basically, and they're responsible for the uh, Hall conductance. Now, uh, what you can show is that the, the states uh, which, um, when, when you have a, a fractional quantum Hall effect, the, the states uh, 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 
the, 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 the Hall conductivity, the Hall conductance that results from these electric, uh, the, the, uh, basically the charges around the edges, uh, always has the form of, uh, which you can write it as nu times e squared over h. e squared over h has dimensions of a conductance. And nu is a quantum number that turns out to always be a simple uh, rational fraction. Uh, and, uh, uh, and this fraction is just equal to the filling fraction of, uh, 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 of the Lenner level filling fraction, which is equal, that's by definition, the number of electrons divided by the number of flux quanta. Uh, in the absence of impurities, when impurities are present, then uh, the, 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 the quantized Hall, the, the Hall conductance is still quantized, but the density can vary because you have these uh, extra states that can so soak up the extra electrons. And beginning with experiments uh, in 1982 uh, by uh, Tsui, uh, Stormer, and Gossard, uh, fractional quantum Hall states have been seen in many, many, I think now well over 100 fractions, mostly with odd denominators. And we pretty much understand the origin of these states, not perfectly, but we have a pretty good understanding of them. But on the other hand, uh, even denominator states, uh, fraction, uh, quantized states are, are rather rare. Uh, uh, and there isn't one, for example, at filling fraction one half, but there, the most prominent one uh, is at filling fraction five halves, which was first observed by uh, Willard and company in 1987, uh, uh, 30 years ago. And I'm going to try to argue that we still don't understand <laughs> what's going on there. So uh, uh, here's just a, 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 a shows you this, uh, the, uh, the existence of this state. Let's see, this is, here we go. So uh, this is the whole resistivity, one over the conductivity as a fraction of magnetic field for fixed, uh, uh, and basically this is uh, inverse filling fraction. And here you see this very nice plateau at uh, resistance uh, of 0.4, which is the conductive, the conductance is two and a half, five halves. And this, this is uh, not the original, these are measurements done in the year uh, uh, 2000 by Schatz. And just to remind you, so what's going on here is at filling fraction five halves, what you have is the Fermi level is what we say is in the second Landau level. So the, the lowest Landau level, you have uh, one electron spin up, one electron spin down, so two, two states per flux quantum, that's completely filled. And then the act, the thing we're interested in, the partly filled Landau level is the second Landau level, which is if the spins are aligned by the magnetic field, then this spin split Landau level is half full. So that's a half full Landau level. Okay, uh, so, um, so now let me talk about particle hole symmetry in a partially full Landau level. So if you take the limit where the mass of the electron goes to zero while the electron-electron interaction is held fixed, so the cyclotron energy will go to in infinity, uh, and then electron-electron interaction cannot mix these Landau levels because uh, you have an infinite energy denominator, and so you can uh, at least if one spin state is occupied, you can ignore the other spin state. Uh, and uh, 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 so you, you can find yourself to a single lambda level. You can project all the states onto a single lambda level. And in that case, if you have only two body interactions, you can show that there's an exact particle hole symmetry, which would relate if you have some energy eigenstate at some filling fraction nu in that lambda level, then there's an, a corresponding state, which is particle hole conjugate, at one minus nu, and the energies are the same, except for some analytic uh, correction. And all well, the energy gaps will be the same, and so forth. And of course, this particle hole symmetry between nu and mi one minus nu has also consequences between relations of states at half filling, when one minus nu and nu are the same. Uh, uh, and uh, so these w this is actually an important issue uh, that we'll be talking about. And now, of course, in a real system, the mass isn't infinity, so there will always be some lambda level mixing, which will break this exact particle hole symmetry. But in general, uh, you, it, it's going to be it, it turns out to be relatively small. And moreover, uh, it, at least conceptually, you should be able to understand what happens in the case where you can take the limit of uh, uh, of uh, no lambda level mixing, and any good theory should be able to describe this limit uh, uh, appropriately. Okay, all right. So, uh, all right. So let's uh, talk about what happens at 
uh, at this new equals five has where we see a, fraction, a, a quantized Hall state. There's an energy gap and uh, what's going on? So uh, basically uh, there was a lot of confusion at first, but, in 19, uh, but basically there have been two states which are related, uh, which uh, people uh, have uh, uh, come up with, which have been strongly favored by numerical calculations on finite systems as being the explanation for what's going on. One of them is a so-called Fothian state. I won't tell you what it is. It doesn't matter for this purpose, which was first proposed by Moore and Reed in 1991. And then, but this state is actually not uh, its own, it, it, it's not invariant under particle hole symmetry. So you could look at the particle hole conjugate of it, which we call the anti uh, and which is a different state. Uh, uh, and of course, in, the simple, in a model in which you have particle hole symmetry, they, these two states should have uh, uh, identical energies, but they are not the same state. They are, in fact, topologically distinct. You can't even go from one of them to the other by small, any kind of small perturbations without collapsing the energy gap. Uh, and I'll show you, in a, in a, uh, I'll give you a reason for that in a moment. But they're completely separate states. So that means that if these numerical calculations on small systems are correct, then at, at filling fraction five halves, the system must spontaneously break particle hole symmetry by choosing either the Fafian or the anti Fafian state and condensing into it. Now, of course, uh, in the real system, as I say, they're perturbations. Uh, so it can be broken by, by lambda level mixing, but also if you put impurities in, it may favor the, the Fafian or the anti Fafian or deviations. If you're not exactly at, at filling fraction five halves, that will favor one or the other. There'll be boundary effects. But all of these should be small energy differences between the Fafian and the anti Fafian. And it just means that one or the other of them is the ground state. And you don't really know which. There are numerical calculations which seem to favor the anti Fafian by a small amount. But these are sufficiently small and the, the complica the, the sufficiently complicated calculations that you shouldn't necessarily believe one or the other. Uh, and we should say, well, let's try to tell the difference. Are there experiments which can tell us which state is correct? Now, because they're particle hole conjugates, most of the properties of the states are identical. But there is at least one property which is, uh, should be uh, different between them, and that's the thermal conductance. So let me tell you about the thermal conductance in a quantized Hall state, which is also a very interesting property. It turns out that thermal conductance uh, will be quantized. So, uh, uh, so remember, what we're dealing with here is a system where we said there's no mobile excitations in the bulk. And uh, that means uh, if we can neglect phonons, which are, are at very low temperatures we can typically do, uh, uh, and other low, typically what happens if there's no mobile excitations, then there's very little heat conductance at low temperatures by anything in the bulk, and so we're going to ignore it. And then heat cannot flow through the bulk. It can only flow along the edges where you have these uh, uh, gapless states. And generally what will happen in a quantized Hall state is that at each edge, the, in, on average, the heat can only flow in one direction. So, uh, and of course, also, energy is conserved. So therefore, if you have a heat current flowing along the edge in one direction, that heat current must be a constant. It can't have a divergence because then uh, heat energy wouldn't be in a steady state. It can't have a, a divergence because otherwise energy wouldn't be conserved. So if we connect uh, a, a two-dimensional electron system in a quantized Hall state to, to two thermal reservoirs at the two ends, they wanted a higher temperature T1. Whoops. Here, I, uh, it's not somehow, can you see that? No, okay, it's almost invisible. Uh, and this is T2. Now, because if, if heat only flows in this direction on this edge, the particles on this edge don't know anything about what's happening here, so they're going to eventually come into equilibrium at a temperature T1 with this reservoir. And this energy the, here will have an equilibrium at a temperature T2. And remember, there's energy flow along each of these edges, and the energy has to be a constant along each edge, uh, and uh, the temperature is a constant along each edge, uh, and uh, 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 because if energy can't flow across, energy must be conserved, and so uh, uh, we have this situation where we have a 
a, a slightly different temperatures, let's say, if these are small, uh, and there's going to be slightly different uh, currents flowing along the edge. And remember, the point is that uh, th this, uh, the, the amount of heat flowing along a given edge will be determined by the temperature, by this temperature, not by this one. And this is, it, it has to be a constant. It depends on, on gross features of the bulk. But if you were to put impurities or stomp on the edge or do something to it, you cannot change that conductance. The amount of, the, it, 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 you know, even if there's big variations in what happens in the edge, as long as you don't do something so drastic that, that the energy gap collapses and heat can flow across, that the, 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 the amount of heat for a given temperature flowing on a given edge is a proper, it's fixed, it's property of the, uh, the, the gross nature of the, uh, of the bulk system. So it's basically quantized. Uh, and, and, and of course, if you have a, a, a difference, T1 minus T2, the net heat current is just going to be given, uh, it, uh, it'll be proportional to T1 minus T2 with a constant uh, kappa, which, as we say, has to be independent of the details of what's going on in the bulk. Uh, now, there's a caveat here that many of the quantized Hall systems, the fractional quantized Hall systems, actually have, on the microscopic level, uh, states, uh, uh, they may have edge states that flow in opposite directions, counter-propagating states. And uh, in order to reach this system, the state has to be long enough, so uh, the, the system has to be long enough so that you have equilibration along the edge. There's typically a certain length scale over which all the energy will be exchanged between the different modes. And so then in the end, even if you have a left mode and a right mode, on average, let's, uh, the, the right mode may, can carry more heat. And you reach an equilibrium state, a local equilibrium state, where the current flows in only one direction. And then uh, what I said uh, holds. OK. So, uh, 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 so there, clearly, uh, we have only a discrete number of different states. So we're going to have only a discrete number of different uh, uh, values for this thermal conductance. And it turns out the thermal conductance is proportional to the temperature. And we can write it uh, in this form here. Uh, the, the thermal conductance is some number, uh, dimensionless number k times uh, the temperature times uh, a bunch of, of, dimension, uh, of fundamental constants, kappa naught, which involves uh, Boltzmann's constant and Planck's constant. And it turns out that uh, a k is, in each case is a rational number. And it happens to be the net chiral ch central charge uh, in a conformal field theory description of the uh, quantum Hall edge state. And it turns out that this is always, uh, it's an integer for states that are sort of normal states. But if you have states that, uh, uh, that can carry uh, excitations with non-abelian statistics, which are, the, are uh, interesting, it can be a fraction. And indeed, when you look at the uh, Fafian state and the anti-Fafian state, this is precisely what you find, that these are states that uh, have uh, non-abelian statistics. Uh, the, in fact, what they are predicted to have uh, fractional k's. But the important thing is that thermal conductance is different in these two states. They are fun, because they are topologically different, they can have different values. One is 7 halves. The other is 3 halves. The fact that there's a 1 half here reflects the fact that there's Majorana ex edge excitations. And that re that's connected with the non-abelian statistics. So, if we can measure the thermal conduction, we should be able to distinguish whether it's a Fafian, which would have seven halves, or an anti-Fafian state, which has five halves. So now, thermal measurements of the whole quantize, of the thermal conductivity in these uh, quantum Hall states are very difficult. It took a very long time. Uh, the quantum Hall states were discovered in, in 1980. Uh, so in 2013, finally, uh, Jesuit et al. in France uh, were able to make the measurement for uh, in the integer state, and the fractional state was even harder. Uh, and, and this last year, in uh, Mucky Highbloom's lab at the Weizmann Institute, they succeeded in looking at fractional ho quantum Hall states. The first paper that they published in Nature reported measurements at, at integer filling fractions one and two, fractions one third, two thirds, two fifths, three fifths, all in the lowest Lando level uh, fractions with odd denominator. And in each case, it agreed with the predictions. And in some cases, there were counter-propagating modes, and it also agreed. 
to look at the second lander level, they needed much better samples. There were a lot of complications. And so they now, uh, very recently in, in October, reported uh, uh, measurements in the second lander level at filling fraction seven thirds, eight thirds, and five halves. Seven thirds and eight thirds are odd denominator. And what they found agreed with the uh, experimental prediction. So what about five halves? Well, what they found for five halves was k equals five halves. It's not seven halves, not three halves. Didn't agree with either the prediction of the Fafian and the anti fafian So this is a, a, a big shock since people for 20 years have believed that the state must be one of these two. So the question is, what is going on here? Now, it happens that uh, there is a state with, uh, people have at least proposed the possibility of a state which is a particle hole symmetric state that has uh, thermal conductivity five halves. Uh, in particular, it was proposed by Sohn in 2015. He called it the pH particle hole symmetric Fafian, okay, pH Fafian. But closely related states have been proposed actually earlier in other con contexts. So it exists as a sort of mathematical uh, possibility, but numerical calculations definitely did not favor the, 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 the there's no indication that such a state has the, the ground state. Uh, uh, it, it always seemed, a state with these quantum numbers always seemed to have higher energy than what you found for the Fafian or the anti-Fafian. So th we really don't, this is a big mystery. So one possibility that was been proposed that maybe somehow when you take disorder into account, it stabilizes this uh, particle symmetric state. And there was uh, Zucker and Feldman pointed out in, uh, 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 a year ago, uh, in 2016, that there was a number of experiments that were in better agreement with, the, uh, with, the, with this pH Fafian uh, mythical state rather than the other two. So, and he, they proposed that maybe it could somehow be stabilized by disorder. And um, so we've actually looked at that a little bit more closely. Um, uh, we tried uh, after the experiments to see uh, could we find a model uh, which uh, with some specific models of disorder that would actually do what they wanted to do. And short range disorder didn't seem to do it. Uh, we tried uh, looking at an inhomogeneous system. So, so one extreme, one, value, one thing of say if the, if the Fafian and anti Fafian have really the, very much the same energy, but you have impurities, uh, fluctuations in the density of impurities, you have fluctuations uh, from one point to another on the scale of, say, about, uh, it typically it would be a scale of, uh, of, say, a tenth of a micron or something, where you would get regions which would be, uh, have more electrons, others have less, so that one might favor the Fafian, the anti Fafian. Maybe you'd get some kind of an uh, of a inhomogeneous mixture of regions of Fafian and regions of anti Fafian separated by some kind of domain walls. And would that somehow, uh, uh, could that somehow lead to a quantized system where you, uh, you wound up with uh, uh, the uh, thermal Hall conductance five halves. Is it possible? Well, uh, and uh, this is work that, uh, as I said, we've done with Ash uh, Ashwin Wishnamath and uh, postdoc Chang Wang at Harvard. Uh, we said that, well, it does seem to be possible in principle if you really adjust parameters uh, that you could get such a quantized phase, but it seems to us that it's very difficult to achieve uh, with realistic parameters. Uh, Weak disorder, uh, what we just expect is that because domain walls have a cost you a large energy, you really don't want to have domain walls and it's going to just snap if you try to adjust the average density slightly. It's going to go from five halves, from three halves to seven halves, and there's no intermediate state at all, just a first order transition between them. Well, uh, 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 essentially a first, a very, very sharp transition between them. Uh, for strong disorder, uh, there could be an intermediate phase uh, uh, that's in between them, but most likely that phase wouldn't be the phase we're looking for. Rather, uh, we seem to find what we call a thermal metal. This is an interesting phase in which the, 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 the electrical conductance is quantized, uh, so it still has nu equals five halves for the electrical conductance, but the heat is not uh, quantized. Uh, heat can now flow through the bulk 
on, uh, although electron the charges are confined and can't move, they're, they're not mobile in the bulk. You have neutral excitations that can move in the bulk, and these are neutral, they're basically delocalized fermionic excitations that can travel along this network of domain walls without being localized. Uh, and uh, they would therefore conduct heat across the system. It wouldn't be quantized. Heat wouldn't be flowing along the edges. Uh, only under very special conditions can you suppress this, uh, local, can you localize these states and, and, and actually wind up something which would then uh, be an insulator in the bulk and then quantized at the edge. Uh, so that was our conclusion. I should say that uh, uh, people at Weizmann had a different, slightly different model. They came to somewhat different conclusions. Uh, uh, I'm not sure the conclusions are all that different, but they're more optimistic than we are. So uh, you could say maybe we're unduly pessimistic, but I think, uh, oops. Uh, we, I, would, I think you would probably agree with the logic conclusion is that we really don't know what's going on. And this is a mystery that I think uh, has been a renewed mystery that, is, is, uh, that we need to think about. And it may be that we have to consider more seriously the possibility that all these numerical calculations uh, uh, are, are, are not right. Maybe the systems, you really have to go to bigger systems than they were able to consider before you can understand what's going on. So I think this is a real challenge to us, uh, uh, that is to say, in other words, maybe it's true that even for a system without disorder, the ground state really is this particle symmetric state. And, and, that, and both of that has to be true and that it has to have an energy gap, neither of which seems to be in agreement with the numerical calculation. So we'll see. Let me just take a question. Yeah. Oh, yes, of course, but you cannot avoid disorder. But it's, of course, they've worked very, very, very hard to minimize the disorder, but there's still disorder. And we know that there's still, uh, you know, that the density is not perfectly uniform. It does vary by about, you know, half a percent or so from one region to another. So we know that there, is, there, there, there are some density fluctuations. But whether that's, they're enough to, to be important, that, that's, and what their effect would be is, is a question. We know that density fluctuations are not enough to destroy the quantization of the electric current. There's, but, okay, there's, there's a narrow range, of, uh, there's only a narrow range of magnetic field, about 2% range of magnetic field where this plateau actually occurs. So you have to be within that range. But, okay. Uh, it, it looks more elegant in his, in his formulation, but, but, uh, but, but certainly no microscopic reason whatsoever that would, 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 would t it, it's the more natural state actually, if you believe in particle hole symmetry, because it's a particle hole symmetric state, but certainly no energy calculation. I'll say a little bit more at the very end, yeah. No, well, disorder. Um, so uh, it, it's this. Yeah. So it 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 depends whether, you know, you don't really need disorder if you have a constant chemical potential rather than constant density. Uh, it, but basically, what we would believe, what what we normally would believe, is that if you have a small density of impurities, you get localized states, and those localized states can can adjust the 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 the, the reason you want them is so that you can vary the the magnetic field slightly or vary the density slightly without leaving, without starting getting mobile carriers. And so that's good for both, the thir you, you, avoiding mobile carriers is good for both maintaining quantization. Uh, uh, you want to avoid bulk conduction of either heat or electricity, so it's both. Okay, so I still have, I think, uh, 10 minutes left or something, or, so let me talk a little bit about what happens near nu equals a half. So uh, this is when the, now, by contrast, the Fermi level is in the lowest Lando level. You don't have a filled Lando level. And so the uh, effective interactions are different, uh, and everything turns out to be different. There's no evidence whatsoever for a quantized Hall plateau at filling fraction 1 half, as opposed to 5 halves in, say, gallium arsenide. 
And so we, we don't think, there's no evidence for an energy gap. So something different is happening. Uh, and what uh, we usually, the, the common starting point for trying to understand what's happening uh, is uh, the composite fermion uh, picture, which was originally introduced by Jane in the late 80s uh, for quantized Hall states. It was reformulated by Lopez and Fratkin as a system of non-interacting fermions interacting with the Chern-Simons gauge field. Uh, and uh, uh, we, uh, uh, Patrick Lee, Nick Reed, and I, in 1992, uh, reformulated, uh, applied this to the state at, at nu equals a half, I call it unquantized because the whole conductance is not quantized, but it's certainly a quantum state, and also to nearby uh, f uh, fractional quantum Hall states. Uh, and what happens when you make this uh, it's basically a transformation, a unitary transformation that you make on the original problem that makes it into relativistic, uh, non-relativistic fermions with a churn simons field. Then what happens is the external magnetic field is just exactly canceled at nu equals a half by the average churn simons fields. Of course, there's still fluctuations left. And so what you wind up with, if you use this as your, your mean field as your starting point, you have a ground state at nu equals a half, which is a Fermi C of non-interacting uh, 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 of non-relativistic spinless particles in uh, average field zero, but interacting with, of course, the Coulomb interaction is still there, and also interacting with fluctuations in the Chern-Simons gauge field, which are, of course, still important. Uh, and, um, whoops, yeah, and uh, 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 now, as I said, numerical calculations show no indication of spontaneous symmetry breaking at nu equals a half. If you start with projection onto the lowest lambda level, uh, everything seems to be, uh, in the end, uh, 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 part, uh, particle hole symmetric. And uh, uh, I, uh, Duncan has done some very beautiful work on this. I don't know, are you, are you going to talk about it at all in your? Probably not, but anyway, he won't, but he's done some very beautiful work, uh, which, uh, and uh, an experiment, of course, doesn't show anything. Uh, uh, but and the, the problem is that this HLR theory does not look particle hole symmetric, uh, and, uh, it, it, and it's been questioned even since the late uh, 90s, uh, that, uh, that maybe, almost 20 years, that maybe there's really a problem that the theory is not even compatible with particle hole symmetry, and if that's not, tr not correct, then there's some fundamental problem uh, with it. Uh, in, in, in this paper by Song, which I've already mentioned, he formulated a new way of looking at, at, at things uh, in terms, instead of using uh, uh, non-relativistic particles, he, he talked about a Fermi C of massless Dirac particles interacting with the gauge field in a different way, which is part, manifestly particle hole symmetric. So he immediately can get everything particle hole symmetric. And the question then arose is, well, the two theories actually look kind of different. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, and uh, they have different Berry phases and so forth. Are, are the two theories equivalent or are they fundamentally dif di uh, different? And there's been, uh, there was a lot of debate, uh, maybe 20 papers on it. Uh, and uh, uh, okay, and, uh, and uh, we took a, a look at it again, Chang Wang, uh, was involved, Nigel Cooper and Adi Stern and myself uh, at, looked at it last year uh, and uh, we published a paper and then there's some more work that we've done that's not published. Our conclusion is that the two theories are fundamentally equivalent. I'm not sure everyone agrees with this. Uh, the theories, they certainly agree for most properties, even at the level of taking them as RPA theories without calculating anything. Uh, very sophisticated beyond, well, you have to renormalize the mass, renormalize Fermi liquid parameters, but basically uh, they look, uh, uh, you have to do that in both theories. Uh, uh, and in fact, what we find is that there's a surprising amount of emergent asymptotic uh, particle hole symmetry uh, as you approach the limit nu equals a half. For many properties, uh, uh, become particle hole symmetric when you calculate them uh, even at the RPA level, uh, uh, and without any assumption that the microscopic theory is particle hole symmetric. So somehow, just like uh, things become symmetric near a critical point because of some variables are irrelevant, it seems to be that there's, for, for, for many properties, there's an emergent particle hole uh, symmetry, even where for 20 years it was thought that there wasn't. Uh, and on the other hand, there are other properties, as Sohn has pointed out, where 
the theories just don't agree at the, at, at, at the RPA level. And what we now believe is that, so these properties are, are not universal. In other words, there's some, some properties, and it's, it's hard to tell in advance, uh, which do not, which are not automatically particle hole symmetric. They only come out with a particle hole symmetric uh, uh, answer if the original theory was particle hole symmetric. If you've projected onto the lowest lambda level, if you don't project, then they will have deviations from particle hole symmetry, maybe small ones. Uh, and it, it, within the, uh, uh, this uh, Halpern Lee Reed HLR theory, in order to get these quantities right, you can't get them from RPA, which doesn't allow uh, for this variation, uh, but you have to include vertex corrections, uh, which uh, should be there. Vertex corrections, what we mean are that coupling constants at non-zero wave vector or uh, non-zero frequency should have a wave vector frequency dependence. And you need those corrections in order to, to restore particle hole symmetry if you want to restore it uh, for these properties. And we've identified and, and you need particle, you need vertex corrections in the, in the zone Dirac theory also for many properties if you want to get the right answer. You don't need it for particle hole symmetry because that's built in. But if you want to get numerically correct answers, you still need it. And we've identified the, uh, the corrections that you need in order to get agreement uh, 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 when you choose the coefficients correct. There are always coefficients that now you can choose that go with these uh, uh, corrections, and they seem to preserve properties like Galilean invariance and Cohn's theorem uh, and so forth. So I, I think we've, so this seems all right, but uh, of course uh, there's still open questions of whether there are physical properties that we haven't analyzed, uh, which uh, where HLR and Sohn Dirac would make incompatible predictions. Um, so we don't, and then I think at a deeper level, I'm not quite sure what it means for two theories uh, such as HLR and Sohn Dirac to be equivalent low energy theories when you have a Fermi surface. I mean, we, I think it's pretty well understood if, there's, if it's just a, if it's relativistically invariant, but when you have a Fermi surface, it gets, there are a lot of properties that you can look at and a lot of pr parameters that you can worry about. And so I, I'm, I'm not sure what it means. And so we're trying to think about that. Um, uh, uh, as I say, there, uh, uh, and you know, which properties are they supposed to describe exactly, which one's not, uh, I'm not sure. The other thing is we've not, what we'd like to do is somehow derive the HLR theory with vertex corrections, or for that matter derive Sohn Dirac, starting from a microscopic theory. Exactly what we mean by derive is not, I, 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 it's hard to, to find some small parameter where you can do things systematically. Uh, and this has never been satisfactorily done. Obviously, we're not going to be able to do it uh, rigorously for the exact theory. So those are the open questions that uh, I would leave you with. I just want to have, show one more. This is my last slide uh, I, I, um, because it's relevant to the, to the, the, uh, the question of what, what was motivating Sohn and so forth. So, so what is, I, I, I've, so far I've described what's going on in the, in the second lambda level and the first lambda level and in completely different terms. I haven't made any connection, but of course there is a connection between them. Uh, so we, we should be able to understand what's happening if, 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 the, if, if the Sohn Dirac theory or HLR theory predicts a Fermi surface in, uh, at nu equals a half, why do you not see, why is there a quantized Hall state uh, when you're in the second lambda level, what's the difference? Well, there's a difference in the interactions. So, so the explanation uh, uh, is, uh, which was, I think, understood from the very beginning, is that, you, well, a, a Fermi surface can be unstable to formation of, of uh, charge density waves. So in particular, it can be, uh, and most interesting, it can be unstable to the formation of superconductivity. You can form pairs. And if you uh, form a condensate of pairs, you open up an energy gap. And indeed, the properties you're going to get are just the properties w w when it's coupled to the Chern-Simons theory. It's going to uh, have a, uh, it will have an, uh, uh, there's no Goldstone mode because of the coupling to the Chern-Simons field. And it will become a, a theory with a gap. Uh, and uh, 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 and uh, the, uh, uh, and, and you can explain uh, the quantized Hall state uh, and five halves in, the, in those language. And this was worked out in, in really beautiful detail by Reed and Green in 2000, 
uh, and uh, if you want to say what's happening in the Dirac picture, you would say that these three different states, they're all superconducting states, but the, the pairing is in different channels. So the, the, the Fafian state in, in, in the Dirac language is pairing in the angular momentum two channel. And the anti-Fafian is, is angular momentum minus two. And then, so, so, so logically, what about the simplest thing would be just pairing in the L equals zero channel, which would be the particle hole symmetric channel in his language. Okay, and if you want to describe this in, in, in the HLR theory, you can also do it, but then it doesn't look so nice because the, 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 part, the, the Fafian state has pairing L equals one, but the anti-Fafian has L equals minus three, and the symmetric one is L equals minus one. Uh, the, 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 the pH Fafian has L equals minus one. But okay, they're just, it's because it's not a manifestly particle hole symmetric description, so something that's particle hole looks uglier. Symmetric looks uglier. Okay, so that, that, that's the connection between the two. And of course, unless you know, have some microscopic theory that can calculate what is the interaction parameter in these three states, you can't say which one is gonna be, have the lowest energy. And of course, uh, that's at this point, uh, the only way we can try to do that is with numerical calculations, and that doesn't seem to work so well. So okay, that's what I want to say. Again, you can see here how the Higgs mechanism, or the BEA, the, the, the higgs brout englert mechanism uh, is relevant uh, in, in, uh, in uh, lambda level physics. Thank you very much. which you were saying I'm being very naive. Uh, let me put it this way. I am interested in microscopic physics, by which I would mean the relationship between theory and experiment with in microscopic phenomena, or I am interested in microscopic physics, and the way that microscopic physics leads both by theory and experiment to microscopic consequences. If you're only interested in microscopic physics, then I don't think you need to bother with the, I mean, you can ask about what's happening, but you don't have to. There's a perfectly good way of addressing all your questions at the microscopic level. Now, I think numerical simulation is totally well minded. It confuses all the issues, and all the mistakes can arise because you don't have the right numerical scheme. So that I would disregard numerical calculations. But I think the two interesting questions are the relationship between the mathematics or the theory and the physics experiments at microscopic or microscopic level. And the question is, are you interested in how you can get microscopic effects from microscopic ones? And that's very hard. And in fact, it's probably very unique. And if you only use microscopic physics, you can tell that microscopic things, you can ignore microscopic things directly because, the, 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 first of all, maybe not unique. There's a choice of choices. You don't know which one to make. But if you only use microscopic phenomena, then you can perfectly well formulate all your questions in that language and test theory and experiment if your experiments are good enough. So I agree with everything you've said literally, oh, really? but not philosoph philosophically. Ah. Because um, I, you know, I, I, I understand your thirst for beauty and that a lot of, uh, if you're only interested in things that are beautiful uh, and that can be done uh, uh, by sheer thought, then uh, you're absolutely right. But I'm a condensed matter physicist. I'm not a field theorist. Uh, and for me, I want to understand as best I can the physical uh, world where, where, where we, 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 we um, are presented with. So I am interested in understanding the difference between gallium arsenide and silicon. I'm not only interested in universal things, I am interested in understanding differences. And I think most scientists are interested in that. You know, if, if, you don't, if you only are interested in things you can, dedu you can deduce, then you throw away no, biology, no, no. you throw away... No, no, you misunderstand me. You mis sorry, you misunderstand me. I'm not at all denying the importance of trying to understand it at all levels, but I, I just try to distinguish between the things which you can um, 
detect at one level or another level. And you don't have to look at the microscopic phenomena. Actually, if you don't want to, you can look at what the output is, but entirely perfectly respectable for physics. And that's not idealized at all. And I think uh, it's a good, it's a certainly valid philosophical question. Now, you may say, I want to understand how microscopic things lead to microscopic phenomena. You're perfectly entitled to do that. I'm just saying that's a much harder question. And all right, if you want to spend your time doing that, that's fine. But that's not necessarily the only way to do science. No, I agree. Even, even practical science. I'm not being a theoretical physician. I'm not being a mathematician. I'm not arguing for beauty. I'm arguing for efficiency. Well, uh, I guess I would. Uh, uh, I, 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 I guess I would say that uh, it's, uh, y your approach is efficient for some questions, but not for others. And I happen to be interested in questions, uh, and, and many scientists are interested in questions that are not necessarily addressed uh, so easily. Well, I will, well I will, I, that's a very slippery answer. I, I could say that uh, every question you address has various levels at which you can look at it. You uh, never look at all questions, all depths. You can decide how far you're going to go in your probing and put that as a, as a limit. And as you push further and further, you get more interesting questions. But I think that's a perfectly valid approach to all the systems in nature. And it doesn't hide anything away, but uh, it gets harder and harder as you go down the levels. And that's perfectly acceptable. And I'm happy to, we can agree on that. Uh, can I make a comment on that? Uh, sure. Uh, Professor Ratia, uh, if one would take your attitude, you would miss something absolutely beautiful about the quantum Hall effect. It does have a microscopic, beautiful mathematical microscopic description in which the whole conductance actually is, a, is an index, is given by an index. I'm aware of that. I'm fully aware of that. And I'm going to, obviously, if you're in a situation where you understand how to deal with the microscopic, the microscopic that's excellent. Uh, that seems to be the, one of the rare cases where this can be done. All right, that's nice. I know that. I've known that for a long time. But that is to answer the possible question. But also, where that doesn't work. And I'm trying to get an approach which is philosophically deeper. No, it's too pessimistic. Well, that's not the point. The point is that you can look at the microscopic phenomena and you can understand them. Okay, uh, let's postpone that discussion to 